from Hollywood, the CBS Radio Workshop. Have you ever gotten up on the wrong side of the bed? Have you ever awakened hating the world in general and yourself in particular? If you haven't, this program is not for you. If you have, we respectfully direct your attention to this modern morality tale. The CBS Radio Workshop, dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind presents William N. Robeson's production, People Are No Good, adapted by Mr. Robeson from an original story by Joyce and Ferdy Grofay, Jr., The city awakens. In a million sleep-soured rooms, the metropolitan Chanticleer shatters the smooth black chalice of unconsciousness. Sleep-stuck eyes slowly open. Unwashed faces contort in yawns and hackings and honkings, adding their fetid impurity to the poisoned air. Down the grimy, eastering streets, the pallid sun cheerlessly prevails against the murky morning. The city awakens. Joe awakens, too. (sighs) Ah, shut up. (sighs) Another day. (sighs) Another lousy day. (sighs) As dull as yesterday, as boring as tomorrow. (sighs) Turn on the radio, Joe. Yeah. That's it. Now, what's next? Yeah. Oh, yes. Reach for a cigarette. Light it. And cough. (coughs) You do it every morning, don't you, Joe? (laughs) The time is now 7.33. The weather is lovely this morning. Fair, with just a nip of fall in the air. But it's a good day. A fine day. A day to be glad to be alive in. What's the jerk got to be so cheerful about? He's paid to be cheerful, Joe. (laughs) In just a moment, the early morning news. But first, one of your favorite songs and mine, I Can't Give You Anything But Love, Baby. I can't give you anything but love. You said it, friend. Come on, Joe. That's enough morning meditation. Let us then be up and doing Uh. with a heart for any fate. Come on, Joey. You gotta get up. Why? You know why, Joe, to go to work. Why? You know why, Joe, to earn a living, to pay the rent. For this flea bag? And feed yourself. On that garbage at the corner lunch stand. And clothe yourself. A suit with two pair of pants every couple of years. Oh, come on, Joe, quit the griping and get up. What if I don't? You will. You always do. Now, up we go. Add up, boy. And into the bathroom to scrape your face. Ah, what a kisser. It'll look better after you've shaved it. Three and a half minutes. Why does it always take three and a half minutes to shave? Try going faster. And cut myself? Or slower. It always comes out three and a half minutes. You're in a rut, Joe. You're telling me. You ever try putting on the left shoe first? Are you kidding? Or getting into your jacket right arm first? It would follow up the whole day. Something's bound to. Yeah, it always does. Now, all ready? Out into the big... Beautiful world you go. 82 steps to the lunch counter at the corner. 82 steps to the next scene. The matutinal scene, which is played the same way. With the same dialogue, morning after morning after morning. <laughs> good morning, hey, Joe. What's good about it? Oh, yeah. Hey, come on, so I always have coffee and a donut. Don't I always have coffee and a donut? Honey, well, I didn't get off to a good start without having a few loving words from you each morning. Hey, can't you get something else on that lousy jukebox? Why, lover boy, they're playing our song. Our song? <laughs> What's so funny, huh? What's there to laugh about? Hey, get out of rock side of bed this morning, Joey, huh? Joe's bed only got one side, the wrong one. <laughs> Bunch of crumb bumps. For two cents, I... You'd what, Joe? Throw this cup of hot coffee in their faces. I imagine somebody could scrape up the two cents if you really want to. Uh, well, it might be worth it. Change the routine. Yeah, what'd it get me? Thirty days in jail, probably. 
I guess you're right, Joe. That wouldn't be any change. Huh? Your whole life's a jail sentence. You ain't kidding. People always pushing you around, telling you what to do, telling you what not to do. Why does it have to be this way? Why can't it be different? Why? 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 Good morning, Joe. Marilyn, honey. Sleep well, darling. Yeah, yeah, just great. Uh, I hope the silk sheets didn't scratch. No, no, couldn't be more comfortable. Hey, uh, Marilyn, baby, I, I thought you had an early call at the studio this morning. Mm, let him wait. My husband's comfort comes before my new picture. Oh, you're a doll, a living doll. I thought you might like breakfast in bed. Gee, great. I cooked it myself. Omelet bean herb with truffles and a split of champagne to wash it down. Oh, baby, what did I ever do to deserve you? I ask myself the same question over and over. Every morning I have to pinch myself to make sure I'm not dreaming. Pinch me too, Marilyn, baby. <laughs> hey, Matt! Hey, what do you think you're jabbing in the ribs? If you're finished, I'd like to sit down there. Yeah, Joey, what do you think? You got a lease on that stool? Ah, uh, you crumbs. You lousy bunch of crumbs. A half block down the avenue to the subway station. A half block of people rushing toward a hole in the ground. Sleepy people. Belching people. People with toothpicks stuck in their greasy mouths. A half block of grimy stores. A cat stretching in a delicatessen window among the hams and salami. A monstrous woman sitting in front of a second-hand store. The morning sun warming her bulbous bulges. Highlighting the single black hair growing from the mole on her chin. The silent store window of the undertaker with its dusty, potted palms. There's where they belong, isn't it, Joe? All of them. You said it. All of them. Six foot under. The kids, scrawny, skinny. The little girls playing jacks on the front stoops. And the little boys planning the day's devilment. The traffic roaring up with the changing lights. The flatulent trucks. The screeching cabs mixing the dust of a hundred yesterdays with today's carbon monoxide. And the blind man at the subway entrance selling the morning papers. What's new this morning, Joe? Nothing. Nothing's new. The same old news. Same old headlines. Another test bomb fired in Nevada. Another sex murder in the Bronx. Another war threat in the Middle East. What's the world coming to? And whose fault is it? People. That's who. Dirty water down the gutter. Dirty water spewing into the sewer. Dirty people down the street. Dirty people sweeping into the black hole in the ground, into the subway station, where the stagnant air hangs heavy and moist, moved only by the coming and going of the roaring train. Pete Radich, all you need to top off an already ruined morning. Some days you're luckier. Some days you get an earlier train or a later one, but this just isn't your day. Here he is, grinning, wide awake, cheerful. Pete Radich, jerk. A long time no see, pal. Don't seem long enough. Hey, the wife and I was bowling last night. We looked for you. Bowling's for the birds. <laughs> What's so funny? A bird bowling. Can you picture it? Have to be a pretty big bird, pal. Yeah. Boy, was she hot last night. Who? The wife. Bowl better than a 500 series. Well? Well, what? Ain't you got nothing to say? What do you want? I should give her a medal? Always gives me the willies when the lights flash sharp that way when she goes over a switch. I like it. Then I don't have to look at all these creeps. No, not me. I don't feel right until the lights come back on. I like to know there are people around me. Not me. Why? 
people are no good. Ah, oh, come on, Joe. You don't mean that. You tell me. What's good about them? Well, people are... are people? That's just what I mean. And there are too many of them. They take up too much room. They smell. They talk all the time. They make you work day in and day out, and they throw you a few bucks for your trouble, and then they take most of that away in taxes. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're mixed up, aren't you, Joe? The government takes the taxes. The government is people, ain't it? Well, not exactly. Government of the people, by the people, and for the people, ain't that what it says? Yeah. But it ain't true. It's the politicians. What's the politicians? They get the grab. Oh, Joey, I don't dig you. You really are mixed up. I ain't mixed up. If I had my way, I'd get rid of the people. All of them? Sure. Joey, you worry me. You know what I think you need? What? You need to get married. Ain't I got troubles enough? Ah, you forget all your troubles when you got a nice little ever-loving wife to come home to. Come home where? A cold water flat like you got? Well, of course, we're just starting out housekeeping, but we got our bid in for that new housing project over by the river. Those cracker boxes where the plumbing don't work. And the walls are made of tissue paper and cracked plaster. I know all about them. Eh, hey, they're not bad, Joe. Hey, how are you going to pay the rent if your wife don't work too, huh? Well, when you're married, Joe, you, you, you're building towards something. How can you build anything in a the city? They're always tearing it down. Tearing you down. Tearing at you with noise and dirt all your life until they finally tear you down all the way and stick your six foot under. For a little while. Until they dig up the graveyard so more people can have a new housing project. There's only one way to lick it. Oh, so you figured out a way to lick it, Sure, huh? like in this picture I saw. There's this fella, see? And he's shipwrecked on a desert island. Oh, you mean Robinson Crusoe? Yeah, that's the guy. Boy, he had it made all alone. Nobody to bother him. Plenty to eat, plenty to drink, and no people. Until he found his man Friday. Yeah, that's the part of the picture I didn't like. And me? I'd go nuts on a desert island. Not me. There's nobody to talk to. What's more important, nobody to talk to you. Man, that would be paradise. Yeah, there goes them lights again. That's more like it, huh, Joe? You can't see the people in the blackness. You can't see Pete's silly, cheerful face anymore. Or any of the others. Wonderful, isn't it? Now take a deep breath, Joe. We're coming to your station. The lights are coming on. Empty. Where is everybody? The car's empty. There's no one. No one at all. Oh, man. The car still stinks of people, Joe. The door's open. Get off while you can. Hey! Hey! Wait a minute! Hey! Take it easy, Joe. You wanted a desert island. You've got it. Just take the nearest exit. Here's your desert island, Joe. Manhattan Island. The listener will understand. It is tiring for this omniscience to remain always within the confining walls of the human mind. The listener will then forgive this omniscience the luxury of emerging now into a wider, deeper, more omniscient and omnipotent dimension, in short, to cease being a protagonist and assume the role of a true narrator. The listener is asked to imagine Joe now, a tiny figure alone, a speck in the bottom of a skyscraper canyon somewhere south of 14th Street, somewhere west of the east and east of the North Rivers. A silent speck on a silent island. A motionless speck where nothing moves. A lonely speck in the middle of an empty avenue intersected by an abandoned street. A human being without people. It's... It's like... No, i never seen it just like this before. Once it was nearly like this. One Labor Day morning, just before sunrise. Walking up 8th Avenue, it was almost as empty. But then a checker cab belted across 34th Street and spoiled it all. 
Empty. Empty. Beautiful without people. No, this is nuts. This is screwy. I'm dreaming. So I'm dreaming. So I don't want to wake up. I like it. So quiet. So very, very quiet. Hey! Hey! <laughs> yeah, I gotta be dreaming. The time's come to pinch myself. Ah! So I'm not dreaming. I'm awake. So this is really happening. Joe alone. Joe walking down the endless, empty streets past the second-hand stores in the front of which no bulbous woman sits warming her bulges, past stoops where no scrawny children play, past an undertaker's window still silently framed by two dusty potted palms. And the air about him, no longer poisoned by the exhausts of a thousand trucks and cars, is pure. And the sky above no longer polluted by the myriad activities of millions of people, is bright, and the sun beats down with a strange and unnatural heat. It's hot. Thirsty. Gotta be somebody around. Gotta be a bar open, no matter what kind of a holiday this is. It's gotta be a bar open. Yeah, there's one in the corner. Yeah, it's gotta be open. Jukebox is gone. Charlie's Bar and Grill. Hey, Charlie's is uptown on York Avenue in the 90s, and I'm downtown. Well, I guess there must be more than one. Only this looks like the one on York Avenue. The one I was in last week with Pete and his crummy friends. Same jukebox, same lousy song. So they all look alike. Hey, hey, bartender. Hey, uh, where is everybody? Okay, so I'll help myself. Ah, no, this is a bar whiskey. This stuff is slop. Ah, here we are. Ten-year bottle and bond. Wow. That calls for another one. Hey, wait a minute. Whoa. I'm late for work. Gotta tell him I'm late. Gotta find a phone. Where's the phone? Oh, there on the wall. Got to tell him. They don't answer. The office don't answer. They got to answer. This is Wednesday morning. Somebody's got to be there. Somebody's got to answer. Joe alone. On the telephone. The office doesn't answer. The operator doesn't answer. Information doesn't answer. The police don't answer. Ring. 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 No one. They gotta answer. Somebody's gotta answer. I right, shut up, you technical squawk box. I'll change your tune. Let's see. Yeah. G16, love me tender. Yeah. That ain't the record I want. Shut up! Shut up! <sighs> That's better. Quiet. Nice. I need another shot. Figure this out. <sighs> oh, that TV over the bar. They ought to have a news bulletin about what's going on. Let's see. Channel 2 is the best bet. Hey, but where's the picture? No picture. 
Just that same lousy song. What you trying to pull? Huh? Where's everybody? Where's everybody? Huh? What's that? A cat. A real, live, scrawny, lovely alley cat. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. Hey, puss. Come back. Joe and the cat. Hey, pussy. Joe, hey, kitty, desperate kitty, kitty. for a living contact. The cat, cat-like, suspicious. Joe on his hands and knees, pleading, enticing, seducing. The cat, back arched, spitting, fainting at him with bared claws. Come here, puss. Hey, kitty, kitty. Hey, kitty, kitty. Joe, desperate for a touch of something living, lunging, missing, lunging, and at last connecting, holding the cat tightly in his shaking hands, holding the cat too tightly. No. 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 I just wanted to pet you. I just wanted to hold you, touch you. I just wanted to hold you. No, no, no. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. Joe alone again. The cat lying on the bar in a funny pile. Like a dirty old undershirt that missed the clothes hamper. Joe running now, out from Charlie's bar and grill, out into the empty street. Joe running wildly, searching, madly seeking something alive. Running down to the corner to another bar, its doors invitingly open for business. And across the plate glass window, the same sign, Charlie's bar and grill. And from the jukebox, the same song. And crumpled on the bar, the same still form of the cat. Oh, no. Joe running down one street, up another, and at every corner another Charlie's bar and grill, with its jukebox blaring and its bar bearing the same still form of the cat whom Joe couldn't give anything but love. Joe running, running, running up and down and back and forth across his desert island. Joe alone, running. Joe alone, screaming. Where is everybody? Joe, alone. People are no good. Written, directed, and produced by William N. Robeson. Based upon a story by Joyce and Ferdy Grofay, Jr., a CBS radio workshop from Hollywood. Music was composed and conducted by Amerigo Marino. Joe DeSantis was heard as Joe and John Daner as the narrator. Others in the cast were Shirley Mitchell, Jack Crucian, and Peter Leeds. Next week, the workshop will present from New York, Time Found Again. This is the CBS Radio Network.